and multiplication in time domain is convolution and sin 500t has this rectangle as the Fourier transform. Now, how do you convolve these two signals? If you convolve these two signals, you, you would have seen in signals and systems course, when you convolve two rectangles, the resultant is a triangle. How about the width? Width of the resultant signal is W1 plus W2. So you just have to sum them up. It is minus 500 minus 250 to 500 plus 250. That's all. What is the highest frequency now? 750. The signal is from minus 750 to 750. So what is the Nyquist frequency of the signal? It is twice the highest frequency present in the signal which is 750. That means it is 1300 hertz. Okay. Sorry, it is 1500 hertz. Okay. That's how we calculate the Nyquist frequency when you have multiplication of two signals. Always remember, multiplication in time domain is convolution in the frequency domain and convolution in the time domain is multiplication in the frequency domain. Let us solve the next question. Okay, this is the question. Sin square 2000t convolved with sin cube 1000t multiplied by sin 500t. Now we need to find out the Nyquist frequency of this signal. See, we know the Fourier transform for sin and sin square. So let us try to explain, express this sin cube 1000t in terms of sin and sin square. Okay, let's write it as sin square. 2000t convolved with okay, sin 1000t multiplied by sin square 1000t and then you have sin 500t right now let us transform this time domain equation into the frequency domain okay what is the Fourier transform for sin square 2000t remember that in case of sin square, this 2000 represent half the width. Okay. And Fourier transform for sin square is triangle. Okay. 2000 is half the width. So it is from minus 2000 to 2000. Okay. So that half the width is 2000. Don't worry about the amplitude. We, we are not interested in calculate the amplitude as we are calculating only the highest frequency present in the signal. And this convolution in time domain now is multiplication in the frequency domain. And Fourier transform for sin 1000t is this. It is a rectangle. What is the width of the rectangle? Width is 1000. So it is from minus 500 to 500. Right? And then we have multiplication which is now convolution in the frequency domain. And sin square 1000t has Fourier transform triangle. What is the this 1000, it is half the width. So it is a triangle with half the width 1000. So it is from minus 1000 to 1000. Right? And then we have this multiplication which is now convolution. Okay? Convolved with sin 500t whose Fourier transform is rectangle and 500 represents the width of the rectangle. So it is from minus 250 to 250. Okay. Now just do all these operations and get the desired quantity. Okay. Now look at this. We have this triangle multiplied multiplied by the rectangle. So how does the resultant signal look like? When you multiply these two signals, this signal has support till 2000, but this signal, second rectangle, is zero above 5. 500. So, when you multiply these two signals, the resultant signal will look like this. It is only till 500. Right. It is from minus 500 to 500. Beyond 500, the signal is 0. Okay. And then, convolution with 
a rectangle from minus 1000 to plus 1000 and then convolution with the triangle from minus 250 to 250. Now look at this signal. We have two convolutions. Now you don't worry about the shape of the signal. We just need to find out the highest frequency in the signal. When you convert to these two signals, how, what is the support for the resultant signal? It is from minus 500 minus 1000 to 500 plus 1000. Okay. This plus this plus and this plus this. Right. That's all. This is the support of the resultant signal. Whatever may be the shape. It can be some shape. Okay. Don't worry about the shape of the signal. And then convolve with the rectangle. Which is from minus 250 to 250. What is this? This is minus 1500 to plus 1500. And when you convolve these two, what happens to the support of the signal? It is from minus 1500 minus 250 to 1500 plus 250. And it can be some monkey shape, whatever it is, it doesn't matter for us. So what is the highest frequency present in the signal now? It is 1750. Okay. And calculate the Nyquist frequency Fn, which is nothing but 2 into 1750. How much is that? It is 3500 hertz. Okay. That's how we calculate the Nyquist frequency for the given signal. Sin squared 2000 pi t convolved with sin cube 1000 pi t multiplied by sin 500 t. Understand? This very basic thing. Okay, that's all. That's how we solve the question. Let us first look at the pulse digital modulation, which is under which we first go through pulse core modulation. PCM. This is very important topic which comes around 6 to 8 mark in gate. Okay. Now let's go through the block diagram of the pulse coded modulation. Okay. First we have a sampler. Followed by a quantizer. And then we have encoder. And the output of encoder is passed through a channel. Okay, in channel you might have regenerative repeaters. Okay, and so on. You might have some couple of regenerative repeaters. Okay, and at the receiver. We are giving it to decoder and the output of decoder is given to a low pass filter. That's all. Okay. That's how you transmit the PCM signal. Now let us go through block by block and see what happens exactly. Okay. Now at the input of sampler you have a continuous time signal. You have a continuous time signal at the input of the sampler. This signal you will be sampling. And at the output of sampler what you will have? Just samples of this signal. Right? You will have a samples of this signal. Okay. Now, what is the job of quantizer? Quantizer just quantizes the values, uh, amplitudes of the input signal to a finite set. Let us say one of the value is 7.1 it will be quantized to 7 okay it is approximated value is given to each of the values it is quantized to 7 and so on let us see what happens exactly in more detail in the next few minutes and this what what is the job of encoder encoder will convert this input quantized signal into bits okay it generates the 